Uh, for those of you who I haven't met before tonight, I'm Dave Cohn. I'm the executive director of USC Hillel. I'm finishing my second year in this role. And uh, I see some familiar faces and some new people on the line. Uh, I want to extend a special welcome to anyone who's here who is a newly uh, committed parent in the class of 2025, our new incoming freshman class. I hope that I can be a resource for you. I hope Hillel can be a resource for your student uh, in any number of ways. Uh, and I also want to acknowledge with gratitude the, the dedication and effort of Lynette, Lynette Merriman, who's with us tonight. Uh, Lynette is truly one of the unsung heroes of our campus. In so many ways, you might not see visibly the work that her office does for our student population literally around the clock. Um, but it's part of a, a remarkable network and infrastructure of support that our students have access to as a part of their uh, their their experience on campus. And Lynette's a great friend of Hillel as well. And I really want to thank you for your time tonight. Um, so we're going to start uh, in just a moment. Rebecca is going to start us off, and I'll introduce her in a moment. But we'll we'll take some time to share some some updates and some ideas about this idea of relaunching, about what it means to emerge from the pandemic, whatever that looks like in your family and for your student. Uh, and we will have a good amount of time at the end for questions, both responding to questions that have been submitted in advance uh, and, and questions that you might have along the way. You should feel free to add questions in the chat, to private message them to me or to Jordan or to post them openly as you're comfortable, uh, keeping in mind also that our presenters might not see the questions while they're presenting the screen share portion, but that they will be able to circle back and get to any questions you have before our time is through. Uh, so with that, I'm really honored to introduce Rebecca Rebecca Rubin, our Associate Director of Student Wellness, who's been our lead professional partner and member of our Hillel team launching our Bradley Sonnenberg Wellness Initiative, who has been an invaluable resource to, to dozens of students who've come in need of support and help, uh, and whose expertise has enriched our community uh, and, and has, has, has brought uh, a sense of balance to, to our team and, and to our families of our students uh, who, will, who will kick us off and take it from here. Rebecca, go ahead. Thank you so much, Dave. Hi, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here tonight and to be back with you, uh, and especially in this moment where we're looking to returning to campus. Um, I'm going to pull up a little uh, presentation just so we can all be on the same page. Um, and with this, as I'm doing it, with this return and relaunch, I just want to, you know, that caveat that Dave alluded to that every family is different, every student will have a different reaction. I know, and in, we intrinsically know this, but just to remember that, I'll, and I'll try to make this presentation um, as, you know, as much breath as I can uh, apply and, and so it can be supportive and applicable to you in, in different ways. Um, so I like this picture on the right. Uh, it is USC, it is a football game and it is filled with human beings. And I know that is the dream and the expectation going into the fall. And, you know, it's starting to happen. We have Dodger games and I think, the, are the Kings playing? Oh, I'm gonna misspeak here, um, but we've got games and things are happening. And so hopefully we will be back in the space with fireworks and people we love and teams we love around us soon. Um, and for some, that picture might evoke a lot of anxiety. So we're going to get into that. Um, Dave introduced me. I'm a licensed clinical social worker, and I do provide counseling at Hill. And I've been working with students um, pre-pandemic and also throughout this pandemic through telehealth. And that's something that, you know, in one of the questions, um, we will be continuing to provide counseling um, at, at USC. It's available to all US enrolled USC students, no matter of their faith. Um, or anything else, it is free of charge. And um, there, anyone is welcome to be in touch with me and, and receive support and services. And we'll figure out if I'm not the right fit, we'll figure out what might be helpful on campus or off campus. So Dave, Dave said it, and I wanted to say it too, mazel tov to everyone, um, everyone here, whether you're a first time committed uh, USC family with a entering freshman, or you're just returning after this year um, away. We are so happy that we're all here, that we all get to proceed into this new um, community in the next year. And, and it is a regrowth and a rebirth in a lot of ways. And so uh, just wanted to really welcome us and acknowledge that we've, we've made it in a sense. We've gotten through the school year or your a pandemic year. And I, I know there's a, lot, there's a lot to process and we'll, 
we'll, we'll come to that, um, but to just really celebrate this moment, this spring and, and where we're headed. This is a Viktor Frankl quote. You have perhaps heard it before or seen it throughout the pandemic. It's something I think about a lot with my students. Um, when they come in, um, whether they're really, really anxious, they're dealing with depression, overwhelmed with family, we've all been living through this trauma together and getting through it. And so an abnormal reaction to an abnormal situation is normal behavior. And that's really important for us all to remember, especially for your children, as they're figuring out what's next for them um, as they're deciding where to live or who to live with, uh, which classes to take, how, you know, are they, you know, are there going to be on, not knowing if there will be online classes or in person um, as they're, as they're looking to that and starting to set some expectations up, um, feeling overwhelmed or feeling, um, feeling scared. These are normal reactions. Um, and, and I know that we've been going through this for a year, but to know that this will likely continue too, we're going into something that is, is new for us. And, and the best part about our students and children and anyone in those early years of um, early adolescence through young adulthood is that there's a lot of neuroplasticity. So they are very well equipped to adapt and they might have these more extreme reactions to all of this change and these unexpected um, pivots and, and that is that is okay and that's normal and we're here to support them at Hillel and USC. Um, I laid this out. I just I every time I come to this, you know, kind of understanding of who's coming to campus this coming fall, um, I'm kind of struck by really, you know, how little time these students have really spent at USC. And we've got freshmen, they're coming in and they have had this really disrupted high school experience. I know this varies across the country. Um, so whether, whether or not they were in classes or had you know, events happen or not, but in California, for the most part, it's been a lot of online school and it's been online school at USC. Um, our sophomores, they've perhaps missed their high school graduations, proms, um, all of those like end of year festivities and rituals and expectations for high school um, really were likely not as expected. Um, majority were living at home this year. We've had some students who were in the University Park campus area. Um, so they lived with friends, but they still weren't really on campus doing USC activities. Um, everything was online and they, they adapted and they, I've heard many students learning how to cook and um, doing a lot of things that, you know, maybe a typical sophomore wouldn't necessarily be doing on campus in a residence hall. And then we have our juniors. They've had one and a half semesters only. So they've had their freshman year and some of spring semester until March. That's where I got the half. Um, they may have selected their majors during the pandemic. I think for a lot of the different um, female identifying students, they have just finished Rush. Uh, so they were kind of joining sororities in the midst of the pandemic, really getting to know their friends that way. Um, just a ton of adjustment there. And then our seniors, the, they are the most senior, have only had one and a half years at USC. And I know at Hillel, they're our leaders. They're going to be our leaders. They know what USC looks like, uh, looked like before the pandemic. Um, they, you know, what you see here, they've missed their abroad programs, their internships have been funky, they've, you know, done online, or they've had to kind of, you know, um, postpone. But at the same time, they really do, they know what it can be. Um, and they're gonna, again, have to create, right, they're gonna have to roll with the punches a little bit more as we kind of figure out what USC looks like, and knowing that it might not be exactly the same senior year they've imagined, and they've seen other seniors enjoy. And so, um, for all of these classes, they, they have done so much adjusting and they've been so adaptive in doing so and just really wanted to highlight this. And for those of incoming freshmen to know that in many ways, and Lynette will speak to this, there's two incoming freshman classes and USC is preparing for that. I'll let her take that away um, in a little bit, but this is a really important piece. They're not alone. They kind of get to do this together as a group and, and to really for as parents to normalize that so many, most students at USC are gonna be figuring it out together. And, and that's a great way to build community. And so as much as you can over the course of 
this coming fall semester and summer to let them know that. So, you know, and I, I just so everyone knows, I'm, I'm kind of um, skipping for the sake of this presentation, all of the research and statistics about students struggling. Um, we know before the pandemic we were entering, uh, before we entered the pandemic, we had some of the highest rates of anxiety, depression, um, and suicidality um, ever among this, our college age students. Um, and, and while, you know, it, we've seen those numbers increase during the pandemic, it is, and USC has done, and again, I think Lynette likely knows, you know, this, I know student health and student counseling has been hiring and embedding many more counselors across the campus. So whether that's the LGBT resource center, um, having their own therapist embedded or um, other you know, Dorn's life, there, there are counselors and therapists now across campus and there will be more than there were pre-pandemic. Um, but those statistics, I don't, I don't want to spend too much time on them here. I'm happy to you know, share with any parent who's interested. So do feel free to email me. Um, but I, I just wanted to, to note that and highlight that. I, I am paying attention to that. And I am very keenly aware when I'm working with students of the risk of the population and students and, and how they might be doing. But um, just wanted to, to acknowledge so here we have just, you know, I want to two, two of our Hillel students on the left passing out um, goodies during on Truesdale during the pandemic, you know, during this past year and semester. And, and, you know, these reactions to returning, I think there's a lot of different beliefs that are coming into play and a lot of them are kind of anxious, anxious uh, thoughts, right, that come up. And as parents really thinking about ways that um, you're either right, like we are, we are part of it. You know, we we're feeling that too ourselves as adults and working. And I need to make up for lost time, right? As the first, um, and for students, this is they've got four years. These are going to be the best four years of their lives, and they just lost a year plus, uh, or they're coming in and they need to figure it out really quickly. But there's going to be a lot of adapting in there and so really as much as you can for all of these to really again focus on that normalization um, validating that anxiety um, and and thinking about which parts of this are true and which parts aren't so we have also these are right these are supposed to be the best four years i just said that and then everyone is adjusting why do i need or why do i deserve the help why you know i'm struggling but so is everyone which is I'm glad that they're recognizing in that sense that there is a real adjustment period. Um, but every student, if they can access help, I encourage them to do it. A campus is set up, there's no other place where you've got maybe six or 10 centers set up to help you. And so at USC, you know, I am certainly happy to be the resource too, or the, the um, starting place where I can say the Korchak Center um, for learning and creativity, they have counselors, they can help with attention and they can help with study habits and go there, check out the library. There's a really great mindful study technique happening. And, and getting that help is why, why so many, you know, it's a great part of attending USC. And so really knowing, you know, as a parent and even, you know, in the summertime, learn, you know, if you wanna take a look around at what is available, there's a lot of really hidden gems on campus and, and you know, just letting students know they exist can be helpful for them or you know, for them to tell their friends about too. Um, the next one is a little bit more pandemic induced. I don't have my friends and my comforts and that can also be like a typical you know, incoming freshman feeling like I lost my home and this residence hall is not comfortable. And I miss my home friends, or I miss the three friends I spent the whole pandemic with. That, that is often a really common, is I, you know, I think we're going to start seeing, and I'm hearing it already with the clients and students I work with. So really kind of, you know, can they, can they make friends um, this summer? Can they find different incoming USC students on social media? Could they attend Fresh Fest at Hillel before the campus, you know, the semester starts? Uh, where are there opportunities just to connect with one or two USC students so that they can kind of have a sense of place? And, and you as parents certainly, you know, help support them in that and figuring out what would make sense to, you know, help them feel grounded and in community 
um, as they are entering. The other part is those comforts. You know, I there will be all the shopping I'm sure before going back to to campus and preparing. And so, what are the comforts from home that your child really could use? And what are maybe some of the ones that they don't they're not as aware of? Perhaps it's like a smell, a scent, or something more. Um, visual. So thinking about those things that you can add and, and provide for students, especially after this year of spending so much time at home. Uh, the other USC one, and this one is coming up more and more right now in spring semester, but the idea that everyone is happy, perfect, everyone is, you know, partying together or hanging out and, and I'm left out. And it's coming up on Snapchat and it's social media induced. And I know this has been going on with our adolescent, you know, as teenagers, but it's certainly a really big part right now is some students were really isolating, following the USC guidelines if they were, you know, at, on UPC uh, and really dispelling, right? Trying to find some holes in these arguments and these beliefs, encouraging them to take breaks if they need from social media um, and, you know, really finding where are their peer groups that they can really feel supported and, and connected to. Sometimes we spend a lot of time building expectations on social media of how things should be. And so if they can kind of build their own community, build their own experience, um, that they won't be as dependent or, can, right, or focused on what's happening on social media. Um, the la I'll just do the second to last one. I need to study all of the time. I'm having trouble balancing academics with socializing. So many students have spent this whole year in high school or college studying. They've been in classes, they do their work. They might spend a little time doing other things, but being on campus is gonna include long lunches. Um, it's going to have walks and um, clubs and all of these different, different activities. And so really encouraging them, right? Like to take note of how much time maybe they spent studying, how much time they spent on Zoom and that it's going to, there's going to be that adjustment period. Um, and it's, it might feel great. And I, I do hope it does. And I know, you know, at times as I've embarked into the world, it's been, it's rejuvenating, um, but it can also really get difficult to see like, how am I gonna get an A there's no, you know, pass, no pass, which has been available to the students who have been at USC for the last year and a half, might no longer be available in the same way. I've got to get A's or I've got to get B's, whatever the mentality is or the goals. And I don't know how to do it if I'm going to do anything else other than school. And so, again, there's great resources at school and, and as parents, really encouraging them um, to start to write like how to organize their schedules and how they did it before the pandemic, reminding them that they've done this before too. And then we've got um, on the right, it's our two outgoing as of the end of this week, co-presidents Sarah Oakham and Nicole Waldman. And then um, we've got Alexa Weintraub on the left. And you know, in our Hillel Mass too. And these are the, the different pieces that, you know, sharing throughout, but really, really important, you know, as parents with your children, um, really, you know, the flexibility and trust. I've encircled it around these four different uh, processes um, and, and things we can do for our students. But in social work, we talk about meeting the client where they are. And as we come back to campus, we're all going to be meeting each student, um, each class, where they are. And we don't quite know where everyone is going to be. We don't know where we're going to be either. Um, so I think really that flexibility and trust is a really important part to bring to the summer and bringing to the fall. Um, you know your student, you're sorry, you know your child really, really well. And, and so continuing to, to really see kind of where they are. I know you, sometimes as parents, we have goals and dreams and right, and there's how college should be, but sitting with them right at that level, kind of where are they in this process? And so for the summer, um, this idea of processing, um, can we, can you like process the last year, taking it slow? Um, if it's morning, what was missed, if that's been really difficult for your student, um, your child, um, or, or, you know, the different challenges, but also 
as a parent, really highlighting their resilience. And, um, you know, where were those moments that you were really proud of them? Just looking back, even if you told them in that moment, coming back to it now, especially for those of you who are, who are looking at graduation for high school seniors, um, these are great, great moments to create some, it can be even be a ritual that you do every year. But allowing that processing to happen in the family too, you've gone through a lot together. Um, next was just preparation, preparing, um, gathering information as a parent. You're doing it because you're here tonight. Um, continuing to do that, signing up for the USC alerts or those emails, um, helping connect your student to those emails so that they can be really fully, you know, fully individuating adult and that they can be in the loop of what's going on at USC as well and to feel really empowered by that. So that's a gift and that you can provide. And then, and then like I had mentioned, you know, this idea of talking to roommates, um, encouraging them to reconnect with old roommates or old friends. Maybe they're not remembering all of the people they were friends with or someone in their class. And so, you know, how can you, you know, what are ways to encourage them to, to find old friends um, or to make the new ones? Also knowing, knowing your student, do they need to visit campus? Will that make it feel more comfortable, even if they are in, you know, returning junior? Um, coming back to campus for a weekend or just a day, do they want to come back with a friend? Uh, what are some little ways over the summer to kind of ease into it? Because I know so many of these students too haven't had the opportunity to do the tours. They've done virtual tours. So um, these are just little things that can happen. Um, I like the idea too of just, yeah, and I think we've all been doing this a lot, but practicing cooking together or laundry, maybe even doing it for them the whole pandemic. And, um, and so is that, you know, will that help ease the transition to college? Just like having a fun, how to do basic things um, and, and life maintenance together. Um, the other one is just thinking about balancing their fall course load. What are some ways that they can really, um, really ease into the semester. I think there's going to be a lot of that overcompensating, right? And like trying to make up for that lost time. And so where we can find ways to maybe not take that extra class or evaluate in the first two weeks, that flexibility and helping encourage them to take it slow, take, you know, maybe sign up for the five or six classes, but if you need to drop two of those, but you know, during um, the drop period, do that. That's okay. And then lastly, the normalizing um this is a transition it is filled with discomfort there is a lot there's going to be a lot of transition all around everyone the adults are going through it your faculty are going through it and have been going through it um, it's just a time of a lot of growing pains and then in the gains too from this uh, so just really normalizing that process normalizing that college is not this linear um if i do xyz then you know, I will, I will feel great and meet my goals that there's going to be a lot of these bumps in the road. And I, I know as parents, a lot of the journey is, is sharing the, this perspective. Um, but really, I think, you know, as we're going into this year to give them the opportunity to make those mistakes, to tell, you know, encourage them to understand and build empathy um, with this, this year, this year of so many unknowns and that USC is going to do, I know everything in its power um, to make it as smooth for them as possible. And then the last one is the real true last one is just humor. And so where you can, where can you build some levity? Where can you kind of, you know, right, um, really enjoy, enjoy the experience and be there with them to laugh at the fumbles and, um, and enjoy, enjoy this, uh, this new experience together, um, this unexpected journey we're all on together. Um, and, and with that, that's all from me tonight. Um, I'm, I'm happy to answer more questions. And so please keep them, but I am, please keep them coming in the comments. I haven't been looking, um, but I would like to introduce Dr. Lynette Merriman. She is from the Campus Wellbeing Crisis Intervention Office. Um, like Dave said, Lynette is, works with faculty and students. She um, assists the entire campus community. And I'm, I will, she is very familiar with Trojans, caring for Trojans. She is a part of helping support student well-being. 
um, and faculty well-being, everyone on campus. And so she also um, will be the expert in kind of speaking to what the uh, reopening plan looks like and will share what she knows and what she doesn't know. And, and uh, we'll do questions after. But Lynette, thank you so much for joining us. Um, we are so, so lucky to have you here and um, please, please take it away. Great. Always, I'll wait, no worries. Love technology. We're still, still getting used to it, right? Okay, you should be there. I think you're front and center. My front and center? Okay. All right. Well, I want to, I want to thank Khalil. I want to thank all the parents here tonight. Um, Rebecca, that was a great presentation. I mean, it was a great setup with what our students have been going through and what they're going to face. And I also want to thank Dave for his generous introduction as well. Um, as mentioned, I am in the Campus Wellbeing and Crisis Intervention Office, uh, which really has three different segments to it. It's actually an office that's been around for about three, four years now. And I oversee the campus support and intervention part. And there's also a campus well-being and education component, and then also threat assessment and management. And there are three of us who are AVPs who work together and we are focused on really keeping USC well and supported and successful for all of our folks who are part of the community. So we work with students, faculty, and staff. Um, I've been at the university for many, many years. I was recently reminded I've been at USC for over 30 years. So I think I was really young when I started. And um, I spent 15 years in student affairs uh, supporting students. And then the university decided to redesign and said, we're really good at supporting students, but now we need to support uh, faculty and staff as well. So we became this larger organization. So campus support and intervention is really a troubleshooting office, okay? So we help members of our community who have all kinds of challenges. We help them understand options that they might have on campus to get through these challenges, how to navigate them. We will help them with resources. We will connect them to resources. And what we know is we're a very large community and students, faculty, and staff do get off track at times. And our purpose is to make sure that they're successful. We get them back on track so they can meet the goals that they have set for themselves to be here at the university. And the fact that I'm at an office or in an office that has the word support in its title, and the fact that I have the word support in, its, in my title is basically saying that USC is very focused on making sure folks um, are successful. And so what we find in terms of our students is students might come to us directly if they're just not sure where to go, what to do. We're the first office you can start with because we know the campus very, very well. And it might just be about, let's see, I have a question about a, a scholarship and I'm not sure where I need to go for this. They can start with us and we can get them to the right, the right office. Um, but many of the situations we deal with are, are very complex. So a student might have a financial aid issue, which leads to a mental health challenge, which leads to grade slipping. And all these different elements come together that create a highly complex situation for the student. And what we do is we coordinate the response of support for that student for all these different areas. And we partner with people throughout the university. We might be kind of the head of things in terms of we are the face, but we will be working with financial aid. We might be working with student basic needs or disability services or the academic unit or Hillel. And we will figure out what is the best approach for supporting a, this student with all these different challenges uh, that they are facing. And we might find out about a student having a tough time through a variety of different ways, okay? It might be that a student let's our office know that they're worried about a roommate, a classmate, a good friend. It might be that a family member contacts our office. It could be a faculty or staff member. They could call, they could email. But uh, Rebecca mentioned this, we have this program called Trojans Care for Trojans. 
And it's been around for quite a bit. I remember when we first created it. And it's an opportunity for people to go online through our USC uh, campus support website and fill out a form and report if they're worried about something. And it could be that my roommate hasn't gotten out of bed for three days. Or my best friend just broke up with their partner and they seem distraught and I don't know what to do. And when we get these reports, someone in my office will reach out to that individual and basically say, somebody's worried about you, okay? And the vast, vast majority of our students appreciate that somebody cared enough to let us know and that we wanna jump in and we wanna help in any way we can. These Trojans Care for Trojan reports were initially set up for students and three or four years ago, we broadened it to reporting about faculty and staff as well. So during COVID, it has been very active, to be honest. We have students letting us know that they have a classmate who just does not seem connected in class via Zoom, and they're worried. We will have faculty letting us know that their very bubbly and outgoing student at the beginning of the semester doesn't seem to be bubbly and outgoing now, or their student isn't turning on their camera, or we in the fall semester, not so much in the spring, had a lot of reports about missing students. And we had to figure out, are they in Southern California? Are they in Texas? Are they in Afghanistan? And we would reach out to them and have appointments with them and do everything we could to support them from afar and remotely. Um, we also had students letting us know when they were concerned about their faculty, if they noticed a change in their faculty, which we're trying to create a culture of care and that's exactly what tc for t does, that's what we refer to it as. And so it was very busy during COVID. And this is something that USC will be promoting uh, just regularly when we come back. I will tell you, I did learn yesterday and I'll give some more information about fall soon, but I did learn yesterday um, through an email that USC is preparing a publication that will be mailed to our families' homes and our students that will talk about resources and connection. We are getting too many emails. <laughs> Email inboxes are full, so they're actually going to produce a publication, which I think I look forward to, and they were connecting with me just to make sure they had the information about my area um, correct. Um, our office also does some proactive outreach. So, you know, we're in COVID, but we still had all those fires, and there were still hurricanes, and there was still tragedies and unrest throughout the world. And if we know a student or a staff or faculty are from a community impacted by one of these, we will identify them, email them and reach out to them saying, hey, we know you're from this area. We're concerned, we're here for you. Let us know if we can do anything. If you wanna just talk, let's connect. So we were, very, we're always busy during fire season, um, but there were just a lot of things going on as you know in the world. So that was on top of COVID. So I'm gonna tell a little bit more about what we did this past year, but then focus on where we are moving for next year. Um, you know, USC was, was no different with the extraordinary challenges um, that we faced and all of, all of the world and all of higher education. Um, I also teach um, in the master's program for people wanting to go into student affairs in the School of Education. And I teach a management um, leadership course in the spring. And I taught it last spring in COVID. I taught it this spring. And usually I'm talking about best practices. There are no best practices. I was teaching our student, how do we imagine next practices, our emergent practices? And so we shifted as a university to figure out what are the emergent practices to respond to these needs? And how do we look at the university differently when we come back? And so I'm so proud of our students because they adjusted, they learned how to connect in very different ways. And USC offered a plethora of, of remote programming and opportunities for engagement and communicated regularly about resources and these opportunities. As Rebecca mentioned, there was cooking, there was gaming groups. There were things that we had never even thought about before. We were offering aerobics and yoga online. Anybody could sign up. It used to just be for students. Now faculty and staff could just sign up too. So there were all these things that we just, I, I'll be honest, I'm tired of the word pivot, but we kept pivoting and finding new ways to engage our students and our faculty and staff that I think really, really helped. And our, and our students, I know, were very, very appreciative. Um, and so we, we 
we've just found new ways of doing things. Um, one of the things that uh, I mentioned, we received uh, daily TC for T's. One of the things that was helpful is if they were feeling disconnected, we could connect them to these resources that student affairs was putting together through recreation sports, mindfulness classes, um, and all sorts of other events that they might have just not seen in their emails. So we were helped making these connections as we found out about things. Um, we found out that, you know, we had students with tech issues. So the university did loan a, a lot of laptops. The university purchased a lot of hotspots for students. And somehow we figured out how to circumvent uh, China's firewall so our students could, in China could learn remotely. Um, I had a student from China in the fall semester and in the beginning it was rocky and then she joined me for every single class after that. So we learned a lot and we learned what we could do um, with technology. Uh, the partnerships between faculty and staff and the whole community in helping everyone be successful, I think was very, very um, prevalent. And seeing that faculty were really wanting to help their students. Um, letting us know if they were worried about an individual student or um, my colleague Eileen Rosenstein uh, did a number of sessions like this. I did a few with her in helping faculty identify um, students who were struggling and what are some of the first steps that they could take with those students. So that's some of the training that we put forth at the very beginning and the education we put forth is helping people understand how you can help one another. What are some of the steps you can take? And so um, a lot of things were put in place. Our mindfulness classes went through the roof, okay? And we actually could offer them to more people because of the remote. So moving into next year, we anticipate we'll have in-person mindfulness classes and remote mindfulness classes. And so that I think some of our activities are kind of gonna be a hybrid. So as we begin to head into the fall and really our on-campus existence, um, couple of things I'd like to, to mention. I, I appreciate all that Rebecca said, um, but I'd like to, to ask you to do a few things with your student. Um, one is um, just have conversations with your student. What are they hoping for? Okay. What concerns, if any, do they have? Whether they be a senior and they're coming back to this world or they be a freshman and this is the first time that they've ever ventured this way. I mean, We've all kind of been in these little forests, kind of protected and sheltered, and now COVID changing, we're getting out of the forest, but the outside world is gonna look different and feel different than we've ever um, uh, experienced before. And are people having concerns about that? Ask your students any concerns they're having, and then have a conversation about expectations. Are they realistic? Um, some of the things that they're gonna want are gonna take time. And I know people want to get involved and connect right away and make new friends right away. And connection takes time. Acclimation takes time. And as Rebecca said, we are prepared, as I think every university in America, of thinking that their freshman and transfer classes are now double in size. Because our freshman and sophomore classes and transfer students who have never been on campus, this is all new to them. So I know student affairs is, has increased their part of the budget for their programming that focuses on acclimation and immersion and connection because they know they have a much larger population uh, to work with this semester, uh, this year coming up. And so they have dedicated resources to this larger population, okay? Um, I would say, you know, encourage your student to communicate if they are not doing well. They could communicate it to you, they could communicate it to their RA, they could come to our office, communicate to somebody who knows resources, okay? Because we need to know about the challenges um, in order to help them, obviously. And uh, as Rebecca mentioned, you know, we have students all the time who think that they're the only ones going through something. So please, I can't stress enough, let your students know that, you know what, this is natural. A lot of students are going through this. 
Many times students will come to our um, uh, office before they go to the counseling center because they will sit there and they are afraid of counseling. And we will normalize counseling. We work with students in the, who go to counseling all the time. So those are some of the things we do. And so um, I would just encourage you to find out about USC resources, go through the web, web pages, look at disability services, campus activities, recreational sports, my office, student health, et cetera, and familiarize yourself and connect with them if you have questions. So moving forward, as I mentioned, we've got a lot of events that we're focused on um, acclimating students. We have a very robust student portal that we built during COVID. We will continue to use it. We have the advantage of being in Southern California and weather is typically good. So we do plan to do more outside events um, because we know some people will be skittish still about being inside, okay? We are doing training for RAs and staff and faculty on identifying people who need help and educating them about the resources. And then how do we work together in helping one another? Now we can't predict how open we're gonna be. Our plan is that we're gonna be in the classroom back to the same regular living arrangements pre-COVID. That's our plan, okay? Right now, the numbers in LA County are looking good for COVID, but we take all of our cues from the county and the state, okay? And so we are in touch, the people in our health center are in touch with the county every single week and sometimes daily about what's changing and asking the questions, what can we do, okay? But our plan is that we will come back normal with some enhanced opportunities that we have learned through remote um, activities that might even get more people engaged than we did before, okay? I do know there's one question that has been burning with a lot of parents, and that is uh, requiring vaccines. Our president gave a State of the University address last night, and what she said is our intent is to require vaccines, but we need to address the access and the exceptions first but that is the intent of our university and they'll have more information out as soon as they look at the access issue uh, with the county, okay? But we are planning to be as robust as we can. I think we're gonna be able to reach a lot more students because we know technology can help us with that. And I will tell you as the support office for the university, my colleagues and I have been thinking about fall since December and we wanna do everything we can to prepare to help people as they start transitioning. So how was that? Thank you so much, Lynette. I really appreciate that. Um, this is a time for questions for everyone, um, for all the parents who are here um, right now. So, um, you know, we are a community, we're here to support each other and we really invite any conversation right now. I, I do see there's one question um, from Jeff about his son being a transfer student, hadn't had much much of any time on campus mm -hmm. um, and just looking to connect to resources on campus has been difficult um, thus far. Um, I don't, Lynette, this might be the a best, I'm just pulling it the up best right question now. for you. Yes, just yeah, ways to um, yeah, get Yeah, we are, we are focused on our transfer students as well. Um, and we know that um, oftentimes that connection is a little bit more challenging when you don't come here starting your first year. So I do know that that's one thing, whether they're living in residence or not, there will be programs that are set up for transfer students that are gonna be directed at transfer students. I don't know if your son is gonna be living in a residence or not, but um, know that um, we appreciate the fact that people have not been on campus before and we're gonna be focused on that. And as I mentioned, people can always start connecting with our office and we have conversations like, what were you involved with before? What do you really enjoy? And we can help make those connections for the students on campus. Thank you, Lynette. And we can open it up right now. If there's more questions, um, we can also open up to a more casual space of just communication and connection. Dave, I see you off mute. Yeah. Please. Oh yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I wanna invite everyone to, if you're comfortable, you know, going camera on for this Q and A and connecting that way, please feel free, uh, whatever works well for you. I also know there were a number of questions submitted in advance. So uh, I don't know whether if Jordan, you might wanna feed us a few of those while people are thinking about more questions, but we'll, we'll take, you know, let's, let's not be too protocol driven. Feel free to just jump in also. <laughs> Oh, 
Lena, maybe you can speak uh, to this question um, that Lynn pre-submitted. Um, she asked, what has been the most challenging for students, both socially and academically? And then on the flip side, what have been the positive surprises that you've seen? I think the most challenging is the fact that they haven't been able to gather together in person. Um, that connection, in-person connection is huge. And <clears throat> students found new technology like Slack and other ways to connect with one another. Um, but you know, if you're going through a tough time, it's always nice to be with people in person. And so I will say that that has been tough. I think a lot of faculty like myself did regular check-ins to see how are they doing today and letting them know that it's okay if you're not doing okay, okay? Um, in terms of things that we saw is students being creative with the technology. One of the things I love is when I was trying to do certain things with my class, I didn't know, I'm not as technologically savvy as students, they were like, oh, we found out about this. You can do this. And this is a way to get everybody engaged. And this is, so I think that it opened up um, opportunities for students to engage in ways they had never thought about um, before. And we were seeing platforms that were coming up where students could be in a room and kind of wander over and chat with one another and things like that that we hadn't seen before. So I think our students' um, creativity, their drive to find things, we even saw some entrepreneurial spirit. We had a student, there was a student I was working with who in his hometown, small town, and there was nothing like Uber or uh, not Uber. There was nothing like um, any of the food delivery services. So he and his friend created a food delivery service free of charge um, and engaged all these different restaurants in their community. So he was able to do something entrepreneurial, make a difference and build his resume and feel good about it. Thank you. I'm actually gonna stop recording right now too. So if this makes you feel more comfortable and you know, submitting questions, um, please feel free.